what's going on everyone it's mike it's john back again and this is your match reaction it was everton again <laughs> I'm joking. I'm really sorry I didn't do a match reaction. There was a genuine reason, and then the reason overspilled. But basically, I fell asleep on the 84th minute and then missed about two hours of the game, like, you know, after the game. And then in the morning after, I watched the last 10 minutes and realised it was the same as the first 35 minutes of the second half. And I just thought, no one needs to talk about how awful it was, really. So, uh, we didn't bother doing one. Um, however, look, there's some news that we probably need to talk about tonight, and there's been some development regarding 777. So who best to speak about that than John? Brilliant. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, so there's been a few tweets out today from certain media outlets that Farhad Mashiri met with Josh Wander and representatives of 777 yesterday in London. It seems like Mr. Mashiri, the man, the myth that he is, has sort of give them an ultimatum. Now, rumours are coming out that from Mr. Alan Myers, who's normally quite spot on, he's well known within the circle, as we all know, that he possibly got until the game on Saturday to either come up and fin fi finalise the deal or basically he's going to move on. I wouldn't be surprised if moving on is towards possibly MSP. Now, I don't know whether this is legit that he's given them a little boot up the bum hole to say, come on, get this deal done, or is it a bit of scaremongering towards them to push it along? I, I don't know. Um, but listen, I've said this many times on here, Michael. I've said it to you as well. We need some sort of clarity. Now, whether it be 777, or whether news comes out that we're in talks with MSP or a US consortium or whoever it may be, we just need something to happen now because we all know we apparently have to sell a player by the 30th of June. We want to go into the summer actually knowing who's running the club from the top to the bottom, who's in charge of the day-to-day -day runnings, sort the finances out a lot better than what they are and go into the new season with a bit of optimism because if we've still got this hanging over our head, come August, it's not good for anyone. It's not good for the fans. It's not good for the club. It's not good for the manager. And it's certainly not good for the players because the players are going to want to know who's going, who's coming. So we just need it sorted out. This has dragged on now for something like, I think it's seven months now. You know, and Farhad Mashiri come out not long after he'd started the talks and said, these are the best people for the job. We're hoping it's a quick process. I think he put a number on it of 12 weeks. We're now seven months in and we're no further on. All we know is they're putting money in from somewhere and we're going to have to pay them that back if, if they actually, if Mashiri doesn't go with this group of people. So it needs sorting because day by day, Evan are getting it in a bigger hole financially because there's money coming in from 777. MSP, we owe money to. We owe £40 million pounds to some sort of bank. We still owe Lango Rock £150 million to, to, to finish the stadium. So we need to know where the club's going, and it has to be done quick because, it, as I say, it's no good for anyone. So that that's my take on it. Um, it's dragged on. It's all people seem to talk about now. We're safe, which is, you know, a positive. The football seems to be forgetting and gone about forget seems to be forget bloody I can't speak. Seems to be forgetting forgot blood seems to be forgotten about now, the football side of it. Um because it's every day, seven seven seven, you know, there's another company that they own's gone bust or you know, someone's come in to take their assets and listen, these are the wrong people for the club. And I think we've said this from day one. But whoever it may be, I'll say it again. We need clarity. Yeah, so um, look, this this deal, in my opinion, unless an absolute miracle happens from somewhere, this deal is going to collapse. Um, I think 777 are probably aware of that. If not, it's already been agreed. Uh, Everton will probably walk away from it because at the moment now, the Premier League are getting dragged through the mud. Everton are getting dragged through the mud. And 777 
look like a bunch of charlatans. However, look, let's caveat that. They are a bunch of charlatans. They appear to be con men, is what they've been described as. I, I don't know anything about them. So obviously, I, I don't know if they are charlatans and con men or not. I have no idea about their business operations. But I think the point is, they're being labelled this from external sources. They're being labelled this from different people, um, you know, like lead and oil investments and, and other investment groups. Um, Bonza and the, the plane leasing company have seized three of their planes rather than four. There's plenty of issues that they've they've sort of got. And I think the problem is it's it's now becoming the water is no longer clear, which is Everton, 12 weeks, 777 ownership. That is that is no longer the case. We are now Everton, 215 million pounds roughly indebted to 777, who by all accounts have kept the club afloat for the last seven months. Um, so they deserve absolute credit for that. And I thank them for that, obviously. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is, these aren't the right people. These aren't the right people for this for this takeover they aren't the people that are going to add liquidity to our cash flow they're not going to add any valuable assets to our arsenal which will help us get out of debt and they're not going to create credit facilities which will allow us to optimize our our loan payments so in my opinion these people are not the right people however am i grateful to them yes absolutely because the one thing and the one enemy here of Everton Football Club is Farhad Mashiri. And me and John have made comments on this lots of times. And there's certain people that have been involved in the club over the last few years, over the last five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whoever it may be, who have fundamentally sent this club on a downward spiralling trajectory, which only sped up when Farhad Mashiri came in. The simple fact of the matter is, Everton were never ran this badly before Farhad Mashiri. But it was the equivalent of giving his bank card to a toddler in Smith's toy shop. And Everton went to town, they spent far too much money, and they never had the commercial revenue to cover it. They then got the USM deal, which covered the commercial revenue, which meant they could try and compete with the big boys. And then those players that were signed, the managers that were appointed, People that were brought into this football club have fundamentally ran it into the ground. And Everton Football Club, as of right now, are an absolute carcass of the giants that we once were of English football. Facts. End of story. Now, how do we get out of that? We need somebody to come in with fresh ideas, good ideology, and knows a way where Everton can get out of it. We can have an owner-funded loan. We can have a loan from the director, which we pay back to the director, which will give us the opportunity to spend in the transfer window, make sure our balance sheet looks better. The facts are, as of right now, Everton Football Club are an absolute mess. Farhad Mashiri wanted something like 500 million, the 700 million pound of debt in total. That's 1.2 billion pounds for a clean slate. Now that that is, the Everton are not worth 1.2 million pounds Globally, commercially, in any image, they're not worth it. So we've got some serious issues that need addressing and somebody needs to come into this football club that knows what they're doing, knows how to fix that. I don't think those people are 777 who borrow against assets that they've either got or allegations are they don't even own or they've got double lease agreements against certain assets. All of these allegations all be allegations, they're all damaging, they're all significant, and they're all negative. They really affect Everton. And on top of that, and I hate to be negative, a lot of people are forgetting that Everton may well have lied about the financing behind the stadium, which actually could mean that we start next season with a points deduction. And that's without the threat of administration. If Mashiri goes, oh, 777 aren't putting in the money in uh, in May or June. So I tell you what, I'm not going to put the money in because I can't be bothered. I've washed my hands with it. I'm done. I'm finished. Everton goes soaring into administration at a rate of knots. 
we start next season with an horrendous points deduction, knowing that our saleable assets are all going, we could be in, in, in real trouble. So I know this is a negative video, but Everton have got six weeks to save itself, in my opinion. And that that is the fundamentals of it. The, the thing is, you, 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 you brought the figure up there of £1.2 billion pound to buy Everton. That's if Mishiri does get the £500 million pound that he's wanted since day one. Everton aren't attractive. And listen, we all love Everton Football Club daily. You know, from the minute we open our eyes to the minute we go to sleep, it's conversations about Everton. We're constantly thinking about them. But they're not an attractive proposition anymore, Everton Football Club. They were, but it sounds bad for a, a big blue like myself and Michael and thousands and thousands of other Everton fans to think that we're not attractive anymore. We don't challenge for Europe. The last two, three seasons, we've been in relegation dog fights. Who's going to come to Everton looking at that, that the mess that it's in? What I can't get my head around, though, Michael, is why has Farhad Mashiri stuck with 777 for so long? You did, this day, whether it be tomorrow, the day after, next week, because I think it's pretty inevitable now that the 777 deal is going to fall through. If we can see that and know that, why hasn't Farhad Mashiri seen that before now? It's It's been very well highlighted that it's not just one company or two companies that are struggling under 777. You know, if you hear rumours of one going bust or the administrators have been brought in and one or two of the companies, and you think, well, you know, are they putting all their eggs in one basket with Everton and just concentrating on Everton? Because as you quite rightly said months and months ago, Everton will be their baby if they get in. It'll be the biggest thing they've got on their portfolio. The problem you've got now is they were getting backed and they had backers behind them. Then backers have stopped backing them now. So they've got no money coming in from nowhere. You know, there was £120 million off them, I think. Then there was an £80 million or whatever it was. Then 10 days ago, I think it was something like 20, 25 million. We spoke about this this morning. So if you look at them figures from when they were first interested and they were throwing money in, to keep the club afloat, it started to go lower and lower each time because they just haven't got the cash. Farhad Nashiri must have seen this. And then you go back to what you said before about whoever comes into the club needs the right people to run it. Now, the day Farhad Nashiri stepped into Everton Football Club, he didn't do that. He kept his trust and his faith in Bill Kenwright. Now, listen, I might be wrong in saying this in a lot of people's eyes. I've said this to Michael on the phone. A lot of people seem to have a pop at Bill Kenwright, me included. Listen, he's the man who could have had Manchester City's owners. And the reason why they pulled out the deal was because he wanted to stay involved with the club. They didn't want that. They walked away. The old saying, look at Man City now, if only, if only Bill Kenwright would have went, yeah, I'll hold my hands up. I've had a good stay. The club's yours. But no, he insisted on staying on the board. They walked away. Farhad Mashiri comes in, again, puts his trust in Bill Kenwright. Instead of bringing the right people in, and I've said this many times to you, and I've said it on here as well, he should have brought someone in who knows how to run a football club, someone like a David Dean, who's been at Manchester United, who's been at Arsenal, who knows how to run the club day by day. But no, Farhad Mashiri didn't do that. This man is an accountant. And has put us in £700 million worth of debt. That is an accountant for you. Well, I'm sorry, you wouldn't be giving my tax returns to do. I'm telling you now, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give him anything to do on my behalf. Because if he's an accountant and he runs businesses like this, then how has he survived looking after big companies? Because it, it's beyond me. That he's yeah, but, put in this, this mess. And I'll say it on here now, and people might shoot me down. Say what you want to Bill Ken, about Bill Kenwright. We've all got opinions on him. My opinions aren't great on Bill Kenwright. As I said before, he thought seven, um, Farhad Mashiri was the best man to take over the club. I blame Bill for that because obviously it's turned out he actually wasn't. But on the flip side of that, do I think we would be £700 million in debt under the ownership of Bill Kenwright? No. No, I don't. Not, we will never, ever have been £700 million in debt under Bill Kenwright. So, 
I actually think Bill Kenwright pro probably done a better job than what this tool has done because he's run the club into the ground. We're paying £30 million a year just on interest on bank loans. £30 million a year. The club is losing money on a day-to-day -day basis. Farhad Mashiri has disappeared off the face of the earth. He doesn't want nothing to do with the club. And I actually think so he could get away from this club, he'd probably just walk away with nothing, Michael, because he's done. He's wiped his hands off it. I actually think he'd walk away and say, the club's yours. I don't want a penny for it. And he just wants to get away from it now because he's realised how low into the ground and how bad he's run Everton Football Club. And we can all say, and we've said it on here, the Russian war, the Ukrainian war was the worst thing to happen to Everton Football Club because Usmanov had to pull his tyres out. Yes, it didn't help. It didn't help. But you should, I know you can't put things in place for the war. I know that. But you, should, you still should have something in place for untoward things happening. Not saying it's a war. That was just unlucky. But he had to pull a sponsorship out of Finch Farm. We lost Megaphone around Goodison Park. He put £30 million in for the name and rights for first dibs on Bramley Moor. That's gone. So it just goes from bad to worse. And as Michael pointed out before, it is a negative video. But there's no positivity to talk about. That's why it's so negative. Yeah. If someone you, you, put in the comments anything positive about this club, then I'll take my hat off to you if, you if you can find something positive. Because there isn't. There isn't. The clubs are negative. The teams being a negative, all right, we're, not, we're on a, a, a decent run at the minute. But we spoke about that. Sean Dyche always has them little runs. It's just a negative institution at the minute. And this is why I keep saying we need clarity. Please don't let that clarity be 777. Because what I will say, if you Everton fans and you, Michael, think that things are bad now, if 777 come in and are the owners of our football club, then it's going to go from bad to worse. Well, look, um, so the term you were, you, you were looking for is all our eggs in one basket, which just happened to be Osmanov's basket. Um, the other thing you were looking for is the simple fact that Everton were once saved by a fan in in terms which was bill kenwright at the time and i just wonder if there's another Everton fan out there that might save us well you've got msp as andy bell he's part of a you know a group of people we owe msp money now i'm pretty sure to see in somewhere that there was a date that msp had to be paid back by if yeah. that date wasn't reached or that date wasn't hit for that money to hit their bank account then they have the choice of taking a stake of Everton Football Club. Now, you mentioned something to me yesterday. You think MSP are just sitting there and watching all this unfold until things start to come out like they have today regarding Mashiri and the meeting with 777. And you said to me, MSP are waiting in the wings. Because soon as Farhad Mashiri says to 777, the deal's off. You haven't come up with the readies. You can't prove to us, you can't prove to the Premier League that you're going to be good owners. It's time for you to walk away. Our MSP waiting for that phone call after he has that conversation with 777 and they get it. What was the figure you said? 300 million? Yeah, if if not even less. So, you know, are MSP doing that? Because I think I'd rather have MSP running the club than 777. I'm not going to sit here and say I know a lot about uh, MSP, but so I think, you, I think, you don't hear the stuff around 777 going on with MSP, do you? So I think the big thing for me is with MSP, you know, there's somebody that really loves the club involved in the business so where they're not going to want to see everton struggle but the other thing is msp are going to have ties to backers that 777 used to have 
So that might mean that we have better better options. I mean, I, I don't really know. You know, you're talking about the likes of MSP, Michael. They're involved in Formula One, so they're not they're nothing like seven 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 for a start. And I think well, the likes of MSP. Start, I've never read. I've never read anyone connected with MSP have football clubs not paying their players and not picking up the phone and being contactable, which is what's happened with Standard the Age today. Their players haven't been paid and they can't contact Josh Wonder 777 to know when the payment's coming out. There's well, also this news to me. Their sporting director is being touted to replace Dan Ashworth at Newcastle. So 777's pack of cards is crumbling around them. I'm telling, I'm telling you now, this deal with 777 will not, it won't happen, but it's just who comes in. And if nobody comes in, we're in deep trouble, John. Deep, 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 deep trouble. I actually think if no one comes in and this isn't sorted in the next two, three, four weeks, Michael, you've got to start looking and this is a terrible way to use but administration no, now there'd be no, there'd be no choice well so if we go into administration before arsenal then we lose nine points this season i would hope so yeah if we go into administration on the monday after the arsenal game then we start next season on minus nine so added, added, to the fact, added to the fact that Michael alluded to before, there could be another points deduction coming in if Everton haven't been straight up with their figures for Bramley Moore. I think I've seen five points touted around for that. So that means Everton could realistically start next season on minus 14 points. With no yeah. Jared Branthwaite, probably no Jordan Pickford. Ananas by the by for me, but everyone knows me thoughts on that. There's the spine of your team. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it would probably be a bit wider than that as well. I think you might see players like James Garner, Tarkowski, Mikulik. I mean, it, it would be a fire sale. However, look, the, the point I want to make is Farhad Mashiri said he wants an answer before the Sheffield United game. Now, is that because... He wants to set the ball in motion for something between the Sheffield United game and the Arsenal game. Is is there something in there that is in going? Yeah, it gives him it gives him a week. I mean, I don't, I don't know, John. I, I I don't know. I don't know if Everton was to push the button on administration. I don't know how fast nine points get deducted. I really don't. But if we beat Sheffield United on Saturday, then irrespective of a nine-point deduction or not, Everton will be a Premier League team next season. Now, I know if I was a businessman and my only option is administration, which, by the way, guys, I don't know if it is, and I really hope it's not. But if it is administration, I would pull the trigger this season after I know we're already safe. Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. And there is some truth that he wants some clarity before Saturday's game against Sheffield United because hopefully we'll know one way or another by then. It's getting dragged out now with 777. It's getting dragged out from their side. It's getting dragged out from Mashiri's side. I think it's pretty obvious to everyone involved in this, whether it be the fans because it's our football club, whether it be Mashiri or whether it be Josh Wonder, I think it's plain and pretty obvious to see that 777 aren't going to own Everton Football Club. So instead no. of giving them a deadline of the Sheffield United game and dragging it out even more, or as you say, is there a method in his madness saying this, and then dragging it out to the Arsenal game, then a week after the Arsenal game, pull the trigger now. The talks are off. The deals fell through. Whoever comes in, sort with them how, how your money's getting paid to you and start talking to somebody else because this needs sorting. A ASAP as soon as possible. We need someone to run the club properly, to run the club better, to have funds, to have the right people in place to run the club, and the right people in place 
not to put our football club in this position ever again. I think that, that, that nails it, to be honest, John. I think you've, you've, you've nailed it there. The passion, the fury, the aggression, it's all there. All there from John there. Um, I will be back potentially with John tomorrow for a match preview for Everton against Sheffield United. I'll give you a bit of advanced warning. I suspect Everton win. I go for four now. I go for I go for ten. No, I'm joking. I'm not doing that because I said that we loot and then they all come for me. Uh, I'm, 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 United have probably been the worst team in the Premier League ever seen. But again, that's no disrespect to Sheffield United. Just take the report. But yeah, I mean, technically, you're not correct. It was Derby, but they haven't been far off. Not far. Um, not far off. Um, so, yeah, guys, look, we will leave it there. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials. And if you do need anything in the meantime, speak to you soon.